Hello, my name is Yurai and today I would like to show you how you can upgrade a disk in iMac 2019 because when you want to upgrade an SSD and buy it with an SSD it can get really expensive very quickly. So instead I got the default 1TB hard drive, uh, Fusion drive which has 32 gig SSD which is good good enough for system but if you want to do anything else beyond that like it's gonna struggle so I bought this guy 860 Evo from Samsung one terabyte for about 140 bucks which I think it's an amazing deal I, I can't believe we we got to that point where fast drive like this one terabyte is only 140 dollars I can't wait for four terabyte eight terabyte drives that are this affordable I'm pretty sure in, in a few years we'll probably get there. Cool, so I ordered and I finally received my toolkit. So these are the adhesive strips. Once the screen comes off, then I'll have to use them to retape the, the screen back together because there's no screws, it's only a piece of adhesive. And this is the cutter, it has a specific length that it goes to. So as to not to cut, let's say, the camera in here, because you, I'm not sure hopefully you can see that. It only goes about seven millimeters, maybe a bit more. So let's get to it. Okay, I have placed the iMac on the desk because I was afraid that once I start peeling it off, the adhesive, that it might tip over and I'll break the screen like poor Andy did. <laughs> So first off, let's start a point where I can get in. Perfect. And let's just keep going at it. Only until the point of the end of the tip. Never try to pry it with this, you'll break the screen. And trust me, I do know what I'm talking about. Unfortunately. I'm holding it with one hand. It's a very delicate operation, so be careful. I have to remove this cable. Okay, that cable's out. It has a nice little latch. Cable on the other side. Slide in, fantastic. There's glue at the bottom as well. Just does not want to go. I'm not sure if this is the best position to hold it in. It's not gonna go anywhere. But let me see if I can support it with something. a bit better okay now let's have a look at the drive itself this is what it looks like I believe it's T8 and it is Okay, it holds here, so there's two more screws. 
Let's remove those. I'm pretty certain there is going to be a cable. But I don't need to remove it because I've got access, so easy peasy. Just have to be careful not to have this fall. So make sure you hold it. And it's out. Beautiful black. Love it. Okay, so let's mount it onto the side. I've got some spare crew, so I'm not gonna get a cradle to hold it in because I'm pretty sure this one can hold it on its own. It's really light, it's like 120 grams and I'm not gonna be moving this. But you should get a cradle just to have the peace of mind. So I have hacked it, I hacked it together. I had to remove the rubber because the screw was too short wouldn't go through and I just mounted it on the plate directly it holds only with one screw get a caddy if you have time I just want to have it done today so I'm doing it I'm really hacking it doing it this way it's not a proper way I know thanks for letting me in the comments know that I didn't do it right but I just could not be bothered to um, wait for it to come because as you can see it's a bit of a mess on my desk right now um, and because there's no vibration well there is vibration there's going to be a lot of vibration from the fan but not from the hard drive itself it's really light so i'm pretty sure it's not going to be an issue okay let's put it back together Now that this is finished, I need to remove the residue of this glue so I can reapply those new ones. So let's unwrap this. It does not specifically say this is for 2019 model, but I believe it's going to work the same because the screen is the same size so everything should be the same hopefully each of them do have a number in what order you need to apply it and remove them okay so they say to remove all the adhesive which I have done and start with strip number 13 which goes on the right vertical okay so 13, so I need to remove the back, so I need to remove the back first and then I remove the front once I have all of them applied. Like a glove, well kind of, if the glove is a bit longer, so there's a dot that helps you to align it. Unless it has another purpose. Okay, aligns, aligns, aligns beautifully. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the top, with the short one. Okay, careful. a glove now let's remove the bottom this is a 
very delicate work. I need to lift it, reconnect all the connections, one and two, and then remove all these stripes so I can glue it back together. Okay, no smoke. I'm not really sure how that's possible. At the start, you have to press Command R, which will launch the recovery utility. If you have the wireless keyboard, which I presume you do, because it came with it, you have to use the cable, otherwise the connection doesn't work and nothing will show up. So use the cable or use another keyboard. First thing that you're going to have to do is to go to Disk Utility, Continue, and Format. This is the new drive. I have already formatted it, but let's just go Erase and format with APFS, that's the new file system, Apple file system, I would use encrypted, but I'm just gonna encrypt it in the system later on. Um, don't use the older versions, Mac OS extended, that's an old file format, the new APFS is specifically designed for SSD drives. So use that, format it, quit, and then you can go reinstall Mac OS, Okay, so about half an hour, 18 minutes, 30 minutes. After installing macOS, fresh macOS, these are the old results. I'll paste it on screen. These are the current results. Almost five times the speed increase, which is fantastic. The main issue was for me at the beginning, when the system loads, it works fine but once it needs the hard drive it starts to spin up that takes about four or five seconds so that's when the system pretty much stops nothing's happening you have to wait for the drive to boot up or to spin up and it's just really frustrating i, I don't want to have that experience i know it might feel a bit like a first of all problem but i just want to have that fast experience and five times the increase for only $140 plus the tools, plus a bit of time. Um, I think it's absolutely worth it. Um, yeah, hopefully your project goes a bit better. Get that inner caddy in, so you've got the better experience than me, but I'm pretty sure this will be fine for me. Uh, thank you for watching. Not so fast. Okay, let me explain. I've realized a few things while doing this project. First of all, the internal Fusion drive, it's not actually part of the drive itself, as I firstly thought, as for example Firecuda is. It's an actual a drive SSD PCI Express drive um, on the motherboard itself. Uh, so that's what accelerates the uh, spin drive. Secondly, there's, a, there's an option to restore that, but you cannot do that with an SSD. It has to be one solid state drive like you have to have in the system. And the next one has to be rotational disk drive. So it doesn't support two SSD drives, even though it is much faster and would still accelerate the system 
it is unfortunately not possible. Third, and probably the most important bit, what I wanted to say is that the SATA connection for the, for the drive, even though the drive is, is fast and it's almost five times faster as you've seen by results, it's still not as fast as the internal drive that you get with the purchase or upgrade of the SSD. So if you get the one terabyte or 512 or 256, it's about 3000 megabytes per second. So it's additional five, six times faster than the current one. But the price is almost, you know, five times larger as well. So if you get, like you can get external drive as iPhone, iPhone 2, iPhone Do did in his, in his test uh, from SanDisk. You can improve your workflow, but you can also just stick with this, use it for system, which I think is still fantastic and use external drive um, for everything else. So those are the notes that I wanted to share with you. Uh, thanks again for watching and see you next time.